Welcome to What the Privacy. I've got an excellent guest with us today from the Global Cyber Alliance, Alejandro Fernandez Sanuda, pronounced Hello. correctly. Very good. He's the Director of Engagement for the GCA, Global Cyber Alliance, and also main focus is the Internet Integrity Programme. He's based in Brussels, obviously Spanish. He's got a great accent. I went on to Alejandro's LinkedIn profile. If you want to read about a fantastic profile. If you want to write a profile about yourself, look at his profile. It is fantastic. I thought mine was quite flavoursome, but yours is brilliant. Talking about the ingredients in life and your yeah. approach to work. I, I really enjoyed that. Anyway, we digress. Hi, Alejandro. You had a good week? Yes, a very good, a tiring week. Very intensive and very good. So I'm happy. I'm happy that it's coming to an end, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but it's been, it's yeah, been a very nice week. Very, and you, we've had some nice stuff. Me. Yeah, no, it's great. And it's a good way of finishing it because it's been actually last week and this week. It's been very interesting because we've been rewriting the way we tell our story. And it's a difficult exercise, but it's also beautiful. And we could do some tests last week in Madrid and this week in Brussels and also through an online webinar. And it's exhausting, but I think the results are good. So it's very interesting. Good food for thought. Can you just give some background to what the Global Cyber Alliance does, which we're part of? Yeah, the Global Cyber Alliance is, is a non-profit. That's, that's what I like about it. We don't sell anything. We build things together with our partners, and we focus on something that is becoming a central social problem, which is systemic cyber risk. That is the, the risk that we all have by just connecting to the Internet. It's risk because we are being attacked as users. We, are, we need to protect ourselves. And it's risk because the infrastructures are not working the way they should. Yeah? They were not designed for this. So they, you can see the flaws. And those flaws allow for lots of issues and, and lots of problems, as we all know. Yeah. So the Global Star Alliance plays a very active role there. We mobilize communities. We mobilize partners. We make people work. And that's, that's what I like about it. And we focus on two blocks. One of them is the end users. That's the Capacity and Resilience Program. That's where we build cybersecurity toolkits. They have components and resources from our partners, also from ourselves, and they are free for the end users. Yeah. So by those, we empower them. We empower the end users to protect themselves. And the other one, the other side of the house, which is my, my side of the house, is the Internet Integrity Program. There we focus on the infrastructures. And what we want to do there, we want to mobilize those infrastructures. We want, we want them to identify the problems and to make them work together to fix them. And uh, it's difficult. It requires a lot of thinking. It's exhausting, but I, I really like it. I'm enjoying it a lot. Just to put some context of the challenge, I was looking up some statistics on the individuals. 5.3 billion people use the internet, and they reckon by 2025, there'll be 66% of the population will be using the internet. I think it'll go up to 6.54 billion. And if you think about the challenge, we, we did a post yesterday on the number of compromised credentials up until the first day of spring. And the trend is of compromised credentials is up by 103%. So we reckon on our current run rate, we will get over 2 billion additional publicly available compromised credentials. So, but on the flip side, if you think about it, the, the challenge gets even bigger for all of us trying to make the alliance or the you know, global community safer. The the positive or negative, there's 2.7 billion people with no internet access. And I sometimes think I wish I was one of those 2.7 billion people because it's safer to be off net than on net. Don't you think? I don't know. I've been working on the internet for a long time. And lately I've, I've been stepping out of all the social media profiles. So it's kind of, I, I share that wish of not being online all the time. I, I feel lazy about it. I'm, I'm losing my interest and, and focusing on, on real life. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I think I work on the internet. My life has been the internet for, I would say, since 2007, not working on cyber, but on different aspects of the internet. It's an amazing thing. It's given so many opportunities to people, all the people that are becoming digital citizens they're getting lots of chances because it brings your creativity, it brings your mind closer to others. And that's something that has never happened in the history of life. We have to be able to control it. Internet is a human system, so we, we have to be able to change it and to make it 
fit the purpose yeah for it was created it's to communicate minds yeah and, and this is why it's becoming an urgent thing to to fix the internet i don't i don't want people to step out of the internet because it's not safe or i don't want people to step out of the internet because it's not bringing anything to them it's it's a bad thing because the internet is a great opportunity for humanity but at the same time we we see that the internet is a very naive environment all the infrastructures were created with very noble purpose but they're being abused they're being con- constantly abused and by those who know that how they work yeah they are they are abusing the system all the time and they are using it for other purposes and i think it's about time that we we ask for our rights and to and to say hey look at this you're using our data you're getting rich because of us you're building up lots of fortunes everywhere because of of the way we use the internet it's about time that we demand cleanness some hygiene some basic rules so that we can trust the internet and it can become something useful and universal as it should be yeah not a universal so- platform for abuse so that's a, a really good segue into the program you're leading within Global Cyber Alliance, the Internet Integrity Program. And I'm not a cynic. I just think everything's commercially driven. As you said, there's a lot of people making money out of the, the platforms. And there's a lot of stuff going on around the, the globe about different platforms manipulating our data and using it and selling it. And I read the, the website because there's some great words on there. There's no single entity that can lay down the law for the Internet and its use. You're leading this program. I know you're trying to bring all these collaborative partners together. That's a challenge, isn't it? How do you do that? Or how have you started? I don't lead the program. I, I, I have Leslie Daigle. She's the mastermind behind it. And I'll tell yeah. you, because it's very important and, and you'll understand how it started. I got the challenge of building the communities and building the engagement around it. Yeah. I am the least technical person in the team. The Internet Integrity team is like the A team of the internet. You have people that were directly involved in things like IPv6, manners. They are cyber celebrities. They are some of them have played a really, really important role in the building of the internet infrastructure infrastructures. And they, there are people that believe in the internet as, as something that should be clean and should be unique. That's something that that Leslie says a lot. It is a whole. We cannot blacklist. We cannot isolate. The internet has to work as a as a unique thing, and it requires a lot of agreement between different parties. Yeah. So how did it start? It it was inspired by manners. I don't know if you know manners. Manners is the mutually agreed norms for routine security. It's a project that started 10 years ago in the Internet Society. Well, they adopted the project, yeah. The idea is that some network operators, they were, you know that routine security is, it can cause massive impacts. It can stop the services of large providers or it can leave entire regions blind from the Internet, yeah. So that was causing a lot of trouble. And a group of network operators, they agreed to meet and say, okay, let's fix this. We all know how make things work, yeah? But let's agree on something because if I do this individually, it's not going to work. We cannot do this on our own. I can only turn the switch on if somebody else is follow the same rules, yeah? So they agreed on these basic rules, which is the mutually agreed norms for routine security, and they started applying them. Now, 10 years later, it's an initiative of uh, over a thousand and a hundred members from all over the world. Of course, there's a lot of things to do still, but it's a smaller program. And it proves that self-regulations that industries can regulate themselves and they can fix issues by themselves and that leslie daigle and phil roberts two of the key components of the internet integrity team she's the founder and the head of it and he's the director of technology he's like the our strategist technical strategist they were there 10 years ago and they took the idea and they said okay let's do this and let's do it not only in root security let's do this in domain abuse and let's do the same thing in in iot security and unwanted traffic to fight against unwanted traffic and that's what we're trying to achieve and as it happens last january we got manners the internet society they decided to okay manners has grown we want it to turn into something more practical we want to increase the uptake and we believe that the global Cyber alliance is the best organization to do that because you are always focused on activity on, on action so they gave manners to us and now it's back to the ones that started it and now it's not only an inspiration but it's also part of what we do and, and that's amazing for me it's a big challenge because it's a lot of new conversations but it's also a great opportunity to understand and to have an example that it worked once it can work again and that's what we're trying to achieve my philosophy in life i always tip my hat off to or say chapeau because i'm a cyclist those innovators or people to actually bring the communities together and be positive and take the criticism and take the positives. I love the organizations such as the Startup for 10s, all these startup companies as well. The challenge it is, is when these Startups for 10 starts evolving, just like the internet did, and then it turns into a different beast. It's then getting all, as you said, getting all the communities together. Now, I'm a great believer in self-regulation, but I think one of the biggest, biggest challenges we've got within any organization 
which is what we need to take on board. We, we take it on board. You guys need to take it on board. Everyone needs to take on board is self-governance. Governance is key on reducing the risk of you being attacked. It, will, it won't reduce the risk 100%, of course, but it will, you know, everything's a marginal gain. I'm going back into cycling again with the Sky cycling team. It's all about marginal gains. <laughs> um, the other program you're running, the Domain Trust program, this is like getting rid of bad domains and spoof domains. The ch- challenges we have for all of us, how many malicious domains do you think there are out there, Alejandro? Oh, millions every day. That's um... 79 million. Akami researchers flagged 79 million domains as malicious in the first okay. half. It's old stats of 2022. We so, have 19 million of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a fantastic stat, isn't it, from yeah. what you've done with the GCA on the Domain Trust? And the good thing about Domain Trust is that it's uh, it's a dynamic environment. So we've done something that is completely different from what others did. Yeah, We we thought that this wasn't a problem of the registries and registrars only. So we brought other players into the game. And everybody plays on equal terms. You have big players, you have small players, you have small startups, you have big organizations like, like ICANN is also playing a role there, yeah? So you have everybody there and, and people are sharing things they want to share with others. So it's not a data feed. They are sharing the things that the others will see. They are sharing that in their name and they are sharing that for the others to do things and who the others are and, and what they're doing with the stuff. Yeah. So it's a different thing. It's like, hey, look at this. We have a problem. Let's all fix it. And that dynamic is different from, from other efforts. And that's what makes us unique. Yeah. And that's something that we collaborate with other efforts that are fighting against domain abuse. We are not the only ones that are doing this. There's the DNS Abuse Institute, ICANN. There are different groups, also the European TLDs, ECO, and also the DNS Research Federation. That's the, the FAP4, we call us. So we all collaborate. But the role of the GCA in that environment is precisely to take the conversation outside of the natural environment, to make it cross country, to make it cross industry, and to play a role that is more focused on the suspected domains than on the actually confirmed domains that are criminal or bad. So we have a mix of those, but the mix, the cocktail that we're building together, everybody brings some ingredients. So so the nature of, of domain trust evolves. And and for the moment, we are we have a lot of suspected domains, which play a very interesting game because they, they create like a early, early, how do you call that? Oh, alerta temprana. My God, early, early. Adopters. Yeah, like, yeah early alerts, early, early like. like oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know where 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 problem could come, and that brings an extra value, and and that that creates special dynamics, yeah, and 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 those dynamics that the challenge is to how to modulate them, how to identify common trends, how to identify things that would mobilize all these people, yeah, even if they belong to different industries. That's the the good thing about it, and the challenge at once, yeah. So domain trust, it's also one of the it's one project inside of the internal integrity program, and and the the idea is to replicate what happened in manners, but taking it to the domain abuse level, which is also a massive problem with many faces. My Spanish is so good. That translation is early notifications, but I might be cheating because yeah. this seems someone put it on the chat. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's, that's a good it. one. Yeah, yeah. Early <laughs> notifications. <laughs> going, go, going back to the Internet Integrity Programme, you must have some building blocks. How are you approaching it? What's the guiding principles behind it? So the, the guiding principle is identifying big problems that require more than one type of an actor. Yeah, And building some data around it and then using the data as, as evidence as objective evidence to push for action that's what we're doing yeah agreed action eh? it's not action that we are defined we don't do recommendations we don't show the way it's the community that builds that way yeah that's a very important thing to, to notice we are not wiser than anybody we just facilitate once we've started doing that we realized and that was phil roberts he said hey look at that we have a bit of the three building blocks of the internet the names the numbers and the roots the internet works like that. It's names, numbers, and roots, and plus, of course, plus humans, yeah. But uh, and data, yeah. But but the, the the way that data reaches the humans is through names, numbers, and roots. Names is the name, domain names. Numbers is the IP addresses, and roots are the roots, yeah. The BGP protocol and and the way packages travel across the world, yeah. So we have one project for each one of those. Names is the domain domain trust. We are focusing on domain abuse there. We had a project that was initially designed for IoT security, which is eight. Now we are we are trying to rethink that one and see that, okay, yeah, we are collecting a lot of information about IoT security, but mostly, most of the information we are collecting is about unwanted traffic and about bad hosting and about how some IPs are permanently causing trouble in the internet. So that goes to the IP space, to the numbers. And then the third one is, is the roots, yeah, the one manners that we just got, yeah. So we have a bit 
the names, a bit in the numbers, and a bit in the rules. There are nuances. We are also working on open source initiatives. We are working on creating uh, our own uh, honeypot technology and, and fine tuning it. So we have more than that, yeah. But the three building blocks of the internet, we have them covered, and we are building communities around them, and that's. That's pretty cool. And that's a realization we had after we started the work, not before. So it, there was no no fixed plan. The plan was to fix issues. It is a long ball game, isn't it? What, yeah. you know, what you're trying to achieve. One of the challenges we have with our, with our customers is we always, our guiding principles are staying within the rules and regulations. So whether whatever federal law in the States or GDPR UK or Europe, you mentioned the word IP address and IP address is personal information now, isn't it? So it falls under GDPR. How would you stay within the rules? We are a global organization. We always follow yeah. the stringest uh, legislation, yeah? So for GDPR, we have a GDPR committee. You can access IP information if you do research in our projects for which you need a... Yeah. You need to agree on the conditions. And one of the conditions is that you don't share that information. You can do research. So you investigate and you you do your findings and you you produce reports. This one, very good one by the Max Planck Institute that was presented. We don't do any naming and shaming. We don't want our data to be used to name and shame. We want it. Yeah. It and we don't sell the data. We don't data, our data is not being consumed. You can exploit it, you can analyze it, and you can build. Yeah. Uh, paper you can build some research but you cannot say okay this here's the list of bad ips you don't do that it's not it's outside of the scope no. so this is the way we we deal with that it's it's a tool for investigation and to highlight the importance of this project our philosophy is similarly you shouldn't name and shame i see companies out there using the sales strategy of fud fear uncertainty and doubt you know it's, to me with my background i always think it's about reduction of risk it's about problem management <laughs> We've got an issue. We've got a babysitting issue. How do you resolve it? Because if you strip out the emotion of resolving a problem, you can then go through your diagnosis and then just say, you have to do this, X, Y, Z. When I do business or anything, if anyone upsets me, I wear my heart on the sleeve. When I used to be a sock director and a big issue, a bank would go down. I used to think, my first thing I used to think, and this is the way I approach what we're doing here, is don't unhappy me. So I'm I'm happy. I don't want you to unhappy me, even though the world's just collapsed. And that way you can strip out the unhappiness and then resolve the issue. And that's why by downgrading the actual challenge to a natural problem, making sure everyone's calm, then you can do your analysis. I think what doesn't help our industry is the media hype, the doom and gloom approach is the game. But like, let's look at the facts. Let's do a diagnosis. What's the issue? How do we resolve it? Let's not panic and let's move forward in a structured way with all the partners knowing what they're doing. So, That's, yeah, I'm full, on, I'm full on with that approach. I, I come from a security environment, yeah, a physical security environment. And physical security and risk management happens when shit, it's, it's, a, it's a consequence of some shit happening, yeah? So yeah. you have to admit that you are not, nothing you design can be perfect, yeah? There's always going to be an accident. There's always going to be something that goes wrong. And those are the learning opportunities. And that's how you build a better system. And this is the, this is what we want to do with... with uh, we want to show that there's a problem, yeah? The infrastructures are causing problems. And it's everybody's business. It's everybody's business. You, can, you cannot look away. You have a piece of responsibility. So let's all have cool head. Let's let's do thing, something about it. Yeah. If you don't want to do it, okay, you don't need to do it right now. But some others will do it, and and then you will you won't be part of the agenda. We believe in self regulation. We believe in the industry, and those who know should inspire the regulators. Yeah. Should show them a way. Yes, we agreed on that. Before the European Union comes and regulates uh, rooted security, here we have manners. It's a reference. It exists already. It can be improved, of course. But we have started the way. And you have to be very humble. Sometimes you have to not only leave the panic away, but also leave your personal interest away and see the whole picture because yeah. the internet is not something that depends on individuals. It's everybody's business. It's a, it's a shared responsibility and you cannot fix the internet by moving one piece. It has to be I, mean, I think we have to accept the way the internet works at the moment. I know everyone's trying to break the cycle of what's been going on. I mean, I think the biggest challenge is quality assurance and red teaming. There's so many CVEs out there, critical vulnerabilities or patches and so on. I think that's just, we just have to live with it. You can't fix it or can you fix it? I'm hoping that the newer companies that come on board with more technology actually start doing security by design rather than getting excited about the business transformation element and the sales element. And I think that's slowly happening. But when you've got some of the major players that we all know and work with ourselves, another thing we've also got to do 
you shouldn't give respect to the cyber criminals, but you've got to give the respect to their knowledge and skill sets from being one or two sets, two game, you know, two steps ahead of you. So that's that's even a bigger challenge we have. Going back to the Global Cyber Alliance and the, the how you get involved with it from an organization point of view. So if I was a new company and I wanted to get involved, what do I need to do? First, you need to understand what we do and see if you fit in there. Yeah. See yeah. if you want to fit there, because we don't want passive partners, we're active partners. So this is, at least in the internal integrity program, is very important. Also in the, in the capacity and resilience program, it comes with commitment to distribute our tools. Yeah, that's very important. For the internal integrity program where I work, there's a qualifying stage. So we have to understand what you do, and you have to understand what you do. And we have to see that you fit for the, and you see, it's a mutual agreement, yeah, but we don't want people that just sit there and do nothing, yeah, we want people that get involved, that that support us in different ways, yes, yeah? so we call it the action plan, yeah, we, we are drafting action plans for every every new partner, that's something new, but for some others, we kind of know after the first calls, but now we want to do it more systematically, and, and, and that's important, because after all, when, once we, we review our partnerships every year, and then we stop and say, hey, what have we achieved? Are we happy with what we have achieved? Yes, no, then should we move forward? Should we not move forward? Should we do something differently? And that's where the interesting part comes because GCA, we are after it's 31, 32 people. I don't know. I've lost the number. <laughs> I don't know how many of us are there, but about around 30 people all over the world. And I mean, we, we have limited resources. So either we have active partners or we will never get to do what we want to do. See, it's like going back into the classroom and you get the uh, the teacher and the, the parents' evening and you, you go in with your parents. <laughs> B or C, you must do better, Andrew. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, was, I was terrible at school, so I always got a D. <laughs> you got a D. <laughs> I was a very hyperactive kid, <laughs> kind of. I got in trouble, but I was a good student, so I I, I, I got mixed uh, reports. But for instance, you, what you're doing now, this this opportunity to speak and to and to say what we do, and, and the way you understand the main trust and the way you, how do you call it, the, you offer your data to for us to understand better, understand the issue better, that's... That's what I would call a, an ideal partner. And that's what we want. Yeah. Every partner you have to, I am the director of engagement. So I have like hundred something partners to deal with. Yeah. But yeah. I remember some of them. I know their names. I, I used to be a teacher too. So I, you're like some of good, you, you have your, your preferred students. Yeah. I, I was a teacher for adults. So I would go for beers with some of them. So <laughs> that's, and you, in the end, you know, you can trust a little little number of them and they keep the thing running and some others are less, less active some others are very active and some of them they just appear every now and then but they keep the things running and as long as there is movement as long as there is enthusiasm as long as there are new ideas and new challenges the thing is working and i think we've we've managed the last since we established the programs it was three years ago we've built the main trust community which is working we are building a very very active aid community research community that is also they enjoy we yeah. We just had a meeting and, and everybody wanted to stay. Nobody wanted to leave. We we let it run for more than 20 minutes over the end of the hour. Yeah. And now we are, we have manners community that we just took over and we are getting people are contacting us and Hey, how do I get more involved into this? And that's, that's amazing. They are asking us and we are building something new there. We, we, all, well, we want all types of students as long as they make some noise. I mean, we haven't even touched on the aid program which is for another day but i mean internet is about a collaborative effort to improve the iot security that's another discussion completely i did a, a white paper for government on the a14 a motorway between felixstowe up to the uh, midlands with all the motorways and local agencies and i mean that that's challenging in itself with all the devices going up the motorway is this just like Billions of devices. That's another challenge. I would just like to thank you for your time this morning. I just want to quote you on your About Us on LinkedIn. I have to say it's probably the best one, besides my own, of course, <laughs> uh, intro. And you're saying, uh, and you, just, you just said it yourself about having all these ingredients. And you, you actually, word for word, it says having those ingredients in place, of course, is a key part of that. But the most important thing is having the opportunity to let them do their magic with the right direction and the right people. You should be a writer, that? Alejandro. That's excellent. Did I, did I say that? <laughs> did you say, is that? I don't know. I was thinking about food when I wrote that, so I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I, wait, I like say food. It afterwards. <laughs> P.S. Talking about ingredients, I also like cooking. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, just, just like to thank you for your time. That's been great. The Global Cyber Alliance, and we're pretty amazed that uh, we got 
take part in it. And hopefully in a few months time, we can invite you back and you can give us uh, an update on, on what's been happening. Yeah, or some recipes. And have a great weekend, Alejandro. You too. Thanks a lot for this. It's great. Thank you.